This video is brought to you by Sailrite. Welcome back to the Learning to Sew series. We're going to sew a throw pillow from beginning to end. And this throw pillow will include a zipper. So we're going to show you how to do that. We've already changed out our thread to a V69 and we have a number 16 size needle. The fabric that we're using is a decorative fabric and it is a medium weight fabric. So as we discussed earlier, it's important to change out the thread and needle size to match the fabric that you'll be sewing with. So let's get started. We have a 19 by 19 pillow insert or pillow form. So we're going to cut our plates. We're going to have two plates, one plate for the front side and one plate for the back side. We're going to cut those two plates the exact same size as the pillow insert or pillow form. So 19 by 19. We have our fabric laid so that the outside surface is facing up. Not that that typically matters. You can mark on both either the outside or the underside. And we do not want to cut on the selvage edge. We don't want this edge to be existing. So I'm actually going to use the fabric all the way to the max, to the end. And I'm going to place a mark there with a pencil. And then I'm going to place a mark at 19 inches. Now, don't worry about marking the fabric much because all of these marks will be our cut lines and they'll also be on the inside of the pillow. Now, let's mark, continue to mark it down another 19 inches so we can follow this stripe pattern all the way down. So we're going to move the fabric and mark it at 19 inches there. Okay, we've marked on that side. Now let's mark from that same location at 19 inches again so that we can work on making as square of a pattern as possible. 19 inches and then move the fabric and mark 19 inches again. Now from the top side we're going to use this pattern here as our starting point. So again we can work on making the fabric square and we'll mark 19 inches from the top of this peak or line or chevron. 19 inches and then we only need a couple marks here from this peak, our chevron point, 19 inches, move the fabric, and then from this one. Now all we need to do is strike lines. This is where we started our measurement, so we'll keep the fabric fairly straight. This fabric is very soft, so it can actually move around on you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just try to line up all these points with our Yard, our ruler, our yardstick. Okay, that looks pretty good. And we'll strike a line. Now, we'll just mark straight down from these two lines. And continue doing that. Now all we have to do is cut our fabric on those lines. Our two plates are cut out and we've lined up the chevrons in a way that we think looks best. It's very difficult to line them up perfectly for a throw pillow. If you have stripes, you definitely want to try to line up the stripes so it looks best. And we'll lay the outer surfaces so that they are facing each other and they'll place them directly on top of each other. We're going to install this 4.5 coil zipper as we did earlier in the previous video in the Learning to Sew series. We're going to place the tape edge of the zipper on the raw edge of the fabric and we're going to use a pencil here and we're going to mark at this very edge where the middle of the teeth are. So the middle of the teeth land right there. And we're going to create a tack stitch at that location. So we're going to remove our zipper and take it to the sewing machine. Now we're going to use our magnetic guide and we're going to stitch right where we place that mark and make sure that our needle enters the fabric at that location. We'll lower our presser foot, hold our trailers, and sew. When we get to about the two inch location, we're going to do a little bit of bar tacking. So right about here, about three stitches in reverse and then back to forward again.
And when we get to the two inch location here, which you can measure if you'd like, and place a mark, we're going to do some reversing there too. About three stitches, and then all the way to the end. Now we're going to take our zipper and we're just going to cut it a little bit past the uh, two inch location. So here's my two inch location. So that's good here. And over here, there's my two inch location where I did a little bit of uh, reversing and I'm going to cut it approximately a half inch past that. Scissors are the zipper cuts very easily with scissors. Now we're going to take this assembly and we're going to unfold it and we're going to be working from the underside. And we're going to splay this assembly apart. Now you could take an iron and crease this so that it lays nice and flat, it makes the job easier. And that always depends on the type of fabric you're using, whether or not it can be ironed under a low heat. So check, check to make sure the fabric accepts ironing. If you can't iron it, sometimes creasing it on the edge of a table like this will cause the uh, splayed out part to lay nice and flat. Now we're going to take our zipper. This zipper, coil zipper, has teeth on one side and then on the other side there are no teeth. So we have to make sure that a coil zipper is positioned so that the teeth are facing down because this is the inside of the fabric. So we'll lay it right on top of this splayed out section and we're going to lay it about a little bit, about an inch and a half or so from the edge of the fabric and then we'll take it to the sewing machine and sew it down. We're going to remove our magnetic guide. We need to make sure that the teeth are centered as we sew. So I'm going to lower my presser foot. I'm going to move the needle to the right to get closer to the teeth. And my presser foot edge is going to ride against the teeth. The teeth are on the underside so you can't see them, but that's what it's doing. We're going to raise our, our zipper so we can see where the center of this is because we want the center of the zipper to be on top of the center of the stitch. I'm going to hold my trailing threads and I'm going to do some reversing at the beginning and then we'll carefully sew this down so it's centered. Take your time here. You don't want to go fast. This is the first time that you're tacking down the, the uh, you're sewing down the zipper. If you don't take your time, then your zipper won't be centered. Now when you get to the end, do some reversing. Then sew to the end with your needle buried. We're going to lift our presser foot. We're going to roll around while the needle's buried. And we're going to sew across and lock this zipper in place so the slider doesn't come off. So we're going to do some reversing here. Carefully sew through the teeth. Put the machine in reverse. Sew through the teeth again. When your needle's on the other side, approximately in the correct location, leave it buried, lift your presser foot, roll the assembly around so we can sew down the other side of the zipper. Since the zipper is secured down, we can do this rather quickly. We already know that it's in the right spot. Just make sure the presser foot is up against the teeth. Teeth are on the underside. And make sure you don't sew any extra fabric in, folds and so forth, that might get stuck. So make sure you're pulling the fabric apart as you pull, or as you sew. Do some reversing. Do not sew over this end yet. We still need to install the slider. So we're going to remove the fabric. Let's turn it over. And now we need to rip our stitches. 
Remember we did a tack stitch approximately two inches from the edge. So I'm going to measure in two inches and then I'm going to take my seam ripper and I'm going to uh, cut the stitches uh, a little bit past that two inch area by about a quarter inch. So two and a quarter inches from the edge of the fabric is where I'm going to start ripping my uh, tack stitches to reveal the zipper. And then I want to stop two inches and a quarter from this end as well. So I'm going to measure there. Right there. Now, when I open this up, you'll see that we have a, a hidden zipper and this is uh, secured shut with a reverse and here as well, it is reversed here to sew this shut as well. We have our 4.5 uh, slider that is a coil slider. We need to separate the teeth to get it started. There's a fat end and a small end. We're going to start the fat end, but we need to make sure the polar is facing down because this is the inside. This is a locking slider, so it has little locking mechanisms here. So what we want to do is we want to make sure that those are not engaged when you're trying to install the slider. So if we push the polar forward, you can see the teeth are not engaged. So we should be able to push it onto the teeth. All right, the zipper slider is on. Let's turn it over and see how she works. Nice. It's a good idea to put the slider in the center. That way it doesn't get in the way when you sew the rest of the assembly together. So we'll leave her there. Now before we sew around the perimeter, we need to finish off the end of this zipper so that the slider will not easily come off. So we're going to do some reversing right here at the end of the zipper. Lower the presser foot, trap your threads, and so I'm going to put the needle in center position. Go slow when you go over the teeth so you don't have any deflection issues. Reverse once, reverse twice. Now we're going to turn it so the outside surface is facing up and we're going to fold it so the outside surfaces are facing each other and the edges are lined up. That is the edges that do not have the zipper because the zipper will want to stick up or rise up like it is here. Line up all sides. Where the zipper has been sewn in, we're going to take this splayed portion and we're going to fold it back. So it creates a nice T that has the tops coming in. I'm going to hold the top and then I'm going to make sure the bottom is lined up here at the corner and I'm going to hold my two fingers there to make sure that it doesn't move on us while we sew. So I'll take this to the sewing machine and I'm probably going to use two hands at first just to get it in the right position. And we're going to sew a half inch from the edge of the fabric. Let's get some stitches in there first. Hold my trailing threads. Do a little bit of reversing. Now let's bury our needle. Let's find that corner again over here. Make sure it's lined up and I'm going to keep my two fingers there. Make sure the edges are good, and they are, and we will sew down the length. Hey, let's make it a little bit easier for ourselves. Let's put that magnetic guide in again. So we make sure that we're sewing right in the same spot all the way around. When I get a half inch from that corner, I'll stop with my needle buried. I'll lift my foot. I'll roll on my needle. I'll hold my finger over here to make sure this side is matched up. I'll lower my presser foot and sew down this side. I'm going to remove the magnetic guide so you can see this a little bit easier. And we're going to sew up to that. I'm going to hold these two plate pieces together with the fold. Sew right through it. Whoops. 
If I, if I miss a fold like that before I get to it, I can lift my presser foot and fold it down and I can make adjustments as I need to pr prior to getting to there. So it's not uncommon for this last stitch to basically need some adjustment. Now we'll sew right through that and reverse. Now all we need to do is take this assembly and open it up via the uh, zipper and turn it right side out and push all corners. We've got our pillow form. We'll compress it slightly and pull the cover over the pillow form. Stuff, stuff, stuff. Be sure to work the corners of the pillow into the corners of the uh, pillow cover. This pillow form also has a zipper and we put the zipper with our zipper so you won't be able to feel it because typically that's the bottom side of the, of the uh, throw pillow. And there you go. Our throw pillow is complete and it has a nice zipper that uh, conceals the zipper with the flap. This concludes the Learning to Sew series. We hope these videos help inspire you to take on or start sewing if you've never sewed before. And if you need helpful advice, we have all kinds of free videos at the Sayerite website, so be sure to check those out. And as always, we stand ready to help you with any questions you may have. Thanks for watching. I'm Eric Grant.